Well, hello. What am I doing out here in the fog on my motorcycle? I'm looking for huckleberries. So I'm picking huckleberries. Rode my motorcycle up here. Totally treacherous journey. With the fruit is the berry. I will be eating it, sharing it with people. I'll be like, where did you get this? I'll be like, oh, you know, rode my motorcycle to the top of a mountain. Pick some huckleberries all day. And all night. <laughs> Why do I do this? It's called being macho. Uh, a little bit of a Napoleon complex. I find that, you know, when you're, uh, when you're not seeing how you wish you were or whatever, uh, when you're a dude but you feel small, like myself, that was which you picked up from my past videos. Um, anyway, you tend to overcompensate in other work ways, like uh, riding a motorcycle really fast, or you know, doing meeting huge challenges, trying to overcome all obstacles, and then you know feel better about yourself. But it's kind of a game, game you play, and we all recognize like uh, how like really macho jerks are annoying and. You know, sometimes nobody likes those people, so you have to walk this fine line of not being one of those people. I do find that um, often my macho-ness is excused as being badass because I'm a woman, and people are like, oh, wow, I didn't think that a woman could do that, but they're, they're not seeing the whole picture, right? But there's definitely, like, more leeway for me getting this positive attention. Rather than if I was a little dude, they would be like, what are you doing, little dude? It's interesting to think about if you think about such things. <laughs> Had to take my big jacket off because I couldn't move around as much collecting these delicious things. But yeah, it's about, it's kind of about games people play. And you can learn a lot about the way people are projecting themselves, you know, uh, people who worry about not being smart enough, belittle other people and, you know, say things like, you're so stupid to other people and that sort of thing. And people who are, you know, think they're fat are exercise addicts and, you know, they're always like really nervous and trying not to get fat. And, and that's not always true. <laughs> but, um, and then being trans comes with some overcompensation issues like, uh, you know, um, being it's interesting, you know, it's like you're over acting the other side, kind of, like uh, before, you, before you transition. And then the beautiful thing is, after hormone therapy, you finally are able to explore this other side. You know, really, for me, I would embrace my femininity, which at this point has not been embraced, other than my gentle nature, which is a pretty nice, nice way to be. Um, yeah, I just haven't been really embracing it. But, uh, like, sometimes I think about piercing my ears. But, um, as of yet, I haven't done so. Because I don't want to be mistaken for a girly. Oh my god. <laughs> and, you know, I have no insecurity about... Well, I get, obviously I do. But, like, I really feel secure as a straight man in my head. But then, in reality, this, uh, there is this insecurity. And it's funny how that is. Like, I don't want to wear a dress because I'd just be a girl wearing a dress. But if I was a guy and I had like a little sarong or skirt on, it would be cool. I'd be like, hey, I'm just walking the wild side because I'm really secure in my, you know, sexuality. And But but I'm not secure. I am insecure. Ah, oh, I admitted it on YouTube. Oh! Well, just forget I said that, and I'm going to pick some more berries. And when I said I, I wanted to wear earrings, I didn't mean like girly earrings, like dangly purple ones. I meant, you know, like made out of bone, human bone from cannibals. A little blustery. In some circles, they call this a lot.